welcome everybody. Welcome to our panel and hopefully everybody ate a very light lunch so you stay awake, right? Who's awake? Woo! <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to yell on the microphone here. <laughs> But yeah, we got to get some excitement going on here because today we are talking retail. What is your consumer experience and what are they really looking for? I think this is a really important topic and uh, we have some really good inter industry experts here to talk about their experience from the tech side and also from the operator side. So I'm going to start with my left and you all can introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and what you do. Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Kyle Sherman, the founder and CEO of FlowHub. I started this company way back uh, in, what's up Michael Johnson? Uh, CEO of Metric over here, uh, he's got some great updates for you. Uh, but no, been in the industry for a long time, about, uh, about 12 years, I started this company 10 years ago. Uh, we uh, sell a dispensary growth platform to retailers. We're very focused on retail. That includes point of sale, payments, inventory, compliance. It's a full platform. We've got over 160 apps in our app store, uh, very extensible. And so really excited today to chat about retail. It's something that I'm super passionate about and I love uh, cannabis. So it's, it's gonna be fun today. John Hartman. Thanks. Uh, well done, my new friend here, Kyle. So uh, appreciate being here. My name's John Hartman. I'm from and represent Ascend Wellness. We are a seven state, multi-state operator. Um, I'm, I'm the opposite of Kyle. I've only been in the cannabis industry for one year, and I come from mostly traditional retail, so very excited to talk about retail today and, and the passion of which we bring uh, the service to our patients and our customers. Ankur. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ankur Rungta. I'm the CEO of C3 Industries. Uh, we're a multi-state operator based in Michigan. Uh, we operate 25 stores today across Michigan, Massachusetts, Missouri, Illinois, and New Jersey. Uh, and to have about five or six years of experience in the retail space now. And John? Hello, John Lowen, uh, co-CEO of Surfside Solutions, Inc. Uh, we work with, thanks. <laughs> we work across uh, the advertising vertical for our cannabis providers in the retail and the brand side uh, with a uh, couple of customers up here as well, but uh, 3,000 plus dispensaries, a couple hundred brands, really focusing on customer acquisition and uh, making sure that you use your first party data for personalized marketing. Great. So from a customer standpoint, and I think we are all consumer facing in one way or another, I'd like to first focus on operators. So John, I'd like to have you chat first about how do we attract uh, retail consumers and what are they actually looking for? So the question, how do we attract re retail consumers and what are they looking for? It's, it's a, that's a big question. I think I'll take a quick bite at both. I think attracting new customers and maintaining our current customers is certainly a big focus for us. Um, you know, e educating customers around the products that we sell, the variety of products that we have on our menu, um, and, uh, you know, sharing with them the, the opportunities they have for, with different form factors across, across that menu is certainly critical. Um, you know, I think the, um, the way we serve them, the way we, you know, the way we uh, meet their needs in the dispensary is also a critical component of it. And I'll just a couple quick points there. I think that whether they're a medical patient or a recreational patient, our customers are looking for a vast, uh, and for very different reasons, they're looking for variety in, in the products. And so whether that's uh, the, the, the strength of the THC or the, the, the terpene component or whether it's uh, different form factors, I think having a really well-balanced menu that meets the, the needs of a variety of customers is you know, something we're focused on. Thank you. And Ankur? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll talk about competitive markets because I think that's, that's where all the interesting stuff is happening. Um, you know, my take right now is that consumers are very, very value focused and, and are really, what we think a lot about is what is the perceived value from a customer when, when they're buying something from us. So if they're looking for a value product, are they getting the price that they want? Are they getting the THC or other metrics that they want? 
If someone's looking for a more high-end branded product, do we have the selection that they're looking for? Again, do we have the price points that they're looking for? To us, it's really about providing the value to the customers. In markets like Michigan that are huge from an overall size standpoint, we're starting to see a massive discrepancy. Even in the same city, one dispensary may be doing five times the revenue of another one. And that's because they're really hitting those perceived value points. And so buying the right product the, the right products at the right prices, turning around and assorting them correctly, setting up your promo system the right way, and really making it exciting for all different types of consumers. Because I think at the end of the day, as retailers, we want to attract a broad spectrum of customers, but they're looking for very different things. And so how do you try to give each of those customer segments the perceived value that they're looking for? And so I do think it's about pricing, assortment, promo strategy. And then the other piece I would mention is how are you communicating that strategy out to people? If there's too much noise in your messaging, you may have a great offering, but you, you may not be doing a good job of communicating that to the customer. And they, again, if it's about perceived value, if they're not perceiving the right things from your offering, then they may not understand that you, they should be shopping with you. So I think having the right assortment, having the right strategy, and then communicating it effectively, those are the critical elements in my mind. And again, I see a customer that's more and more driven by those value considerations over time. Thank you. And so from a tech standpoint, obviously there's a lot of coordination between operators and the tech and marketing. So Kyle, do you want to chat about that? Thanks. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Tech is such a behind the scenes thing, right? It's pretty easy to forget that tech powers infrastructure. It powers your operations. It powers the day-to-day -day for your team that's providing the customer service inside of your dispensary. And, uh, and so tech is really important, right? All the way from the first moment that a consumer walks into your store, they get their ID scanned. That first interaction really matters, right? How fast is that check-in process? I actually was just in uh, Arizona. I've been touring around the country a little bit, visiting dispensaries. I visited about 70 dispensaries there. And I was shocked at the number of dispensaries that, that had the, you know, a re big retail environment, but it took 10 minutes to check in. They weren't using our software, by the way, but I wanted to see what some of our rivals were doing out there, and it was an incredibly uh, long, high friction process just to get in the store. Enough that you're like, why would I come back here? This is ridiculous. It's taking, I just want to buy some gummies. And so, uh, you know, th th from the check-in process all the way through uh, the experience of, of interacting with that bud tender, what information does the bud tender have on you as a consumer? Are there recommendations in the app for them so that it helps them provide a better service? You know, some of the things we do at FlowHub as an example is we, we give the bud tender the ability to see when the, this person last shopped, what they most often like to buy, how much they're likely to spend in this visit. It's very accurate metrics, but it helps the, the bud tender understand, hey, you know, I see you really like gummies. In fact, we have a new brand we just got in. You might want to try them, right? Those little things matter. Uh, it's much deeper than just a loyalty program, right? That the, the tech can enable this really incredible consumer experience, and that's what people come back for, right? People come back to great experiences, and so technology can really enable that, and I think it can easily become an afterthought. And so as an operator, you got to really think, what kind of tech am I using today? Go and If you've been on the same platform for a long time, you should probably go see what's out there because technology moves very quickly. And so uh, just, you know, th those elements are so important. And then you got to think about if you're multi-location, like Ascend, right, you might have stores all over the country. So what's the experience for the traveling consumer? Do, does their loyalty points, do they carry from one store to the next one? Is that data about what they might like to buy, you know, get carried through the stores? And so all of that matters in that consumer experience. That, you know, why do people enjoy Marriott's or Hilton's, right? It's for the loyalty program, the experience they get when they go. They feel connected to the brand. And so technology is the heart and soul that can that allow that to happen at scale for these workers who, who might be minimum wage or uh, low wage on the ground, giving them tools to create that experience, right? And so th those the, the, the technology is so beyond important in the equation uh, in creating great retail experiences in cannabis today. Yeah, and I hear consistency. You know, so if a store goes, if a customer goes to one store in one state, they have consistent experience from one to the other. They know what to expect. And I also hear efficiency, efficiency of time. So 
yeah, those are key. John, how about you at Surfside? Yeah, so I'll kind of bring it back to what Encore was saying around you can you have all this information about where customers are, what's happening in a competitive market. And for us, we're really focused on using technology to execute on the activation or the communication front. And so if you have all this information and you say, hey, I know that I am uh, trying to reach XYZ segment, I know that maybe I'm underperforming in a certain zip code or a certain area, how do you now then pair and personalize that experience from a pricing, from a promo perspective to the right audiences so that you can connect all those dots and actually see customer ac acquisition uh, costs go down or see conversions happening online or in store from a sales perspective. And so you were, as a business, we use technology to really focus on getting people in the door so they can have those experiences and enjoy those in-store experiences. But then once they're there, once they're on the e-commerce site or in the store, can we create uh, a consistent experience from the communication. So if we were, we know that these customers love flour, they love pre-roll, when they land on site, we want to show them flour and pre-roll. We want those product listings to show up first. We want those products that they're the most interested in based on maybe previous exposure to different purchases or interests that they've shown uh, from a data perspective so that we can create this continuous flow of communication and content and have it all dynamically populate based on that user's experience rather than um, more of a painting with a wider brush. And I think that's really important. And it's we talk about it like a lot of this stuff exists already, so we're not necessarily reinventing the wheel in cannabis, but I think we can take what's worked in all these other verticals, whether it's CPG, whether it's retail, and start bringing the best and, and class from those different verticals and apply them to cannabis, and which is a very data-rich industry because uh, you have so much information on the consumer purchase habits from a compliance perspective, and there are a lot of customers who, there are so many SKUs in store, so there's a lot of desire for the customers to have a more tailored experience rather than kind of having a thousand SKUs and thumbnails available to them within the shopping experience. That's great, thank you. And how about uh, different demographics? Um, so Encore, uh, would you like to talk about the, how do you appeal to different demographics and even different geographical regions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm of the mindset that uh, every store has its own unique sort of customer base and demographics and purchasing habits. And so I think we're in an industry where it becomes really hard to generalize even across a single state, let alone across your whole business. And so. Uh, when you're operating a large platform across a lot of markets, you need to really think about what are my key segments that I'm trying to target. Trying to be everything for everyone is really hard in cannabis and actually I think you end up sort of losing focus when you try to do that. And so what we're seeing, and again, I'll speak to competitive markets, but 80% uh, of our sales come from 20% of our customers. Those customers buy certain products like flour. Um, the, there are new customers entering the space. There are demographic changes and shifts that are happening, but those happen very slowly. Those secular shifts take time. And so today, what drives the business are those regular, very well-informed cannabis users. And some of them are looking for value and some of them are looking for premium, but um, we're very much trying to talk to that core customer base. It's not that we're trying to ignore the people on the margins that are coming in, but I think from my standpoint, you have to focus on where the lion's share of your revenue is coming from today. Uh, and so again, within these different cohorts and demographics, I go back to my same mantra of perceived value. Uh, you know, the, the sort of newer customer who's more uh, kind of a more infrequent user, they have a perceived value. It may be different than the person who's buying every day and coming into your store, but how do you tailor your, your, your offering to those folks? How do you message it to them appropriately? Um, that's really the goal. And I, I almost think you can't really generalize. I think it has to be very nuanced very store and, and demographic specific. And uh, I think the more you try to generalize in this space, the, the more you're gonna struggle from a performance standpoint. I wanna add to this because I've seen it with our customer base. It's a great point. You know, you, you could open up, you know, five, six stores in a, in, in a state and quickly figure out that, hey, this particular location is a blue collar location. And that, you know, these folks are coming in every time uh, they get their paycheck. And that's kind of the, 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 the standard there. And so we've got to be a value store. And I've seen this play out, and it's like you just see the revenue increase dramatically when you know the demographic that your store is serving. 
and you know is there. So I just want to agree with you. It's, it's such a great I mean, point. If, you, if you're trying to sell people something they don't want, then it's not going to go so well. That's right. Absolutely. Right. You're trying to, trying to fit the wrong peg in the wrong hole. How about John? Love yeah, ha happy to add to both of those, yeah. both those thoughts. I think, you know, without generalizing, but generalizing, I think beyond the value uh, e equation that, that Encore is referring to, I think, I think about customers in three, three larger buckets. One is the very experienced customer. And typically, and Kyle used the word friction. You know, I'll, I'll borrow that and use the word frictionless. They're looking for that fast in, fast out. They know exactly what they want. You know, 85% of our transactions involve technology. You know, either a pre-order or a kiosk in the store. So they, those super, super premium customers, they're, they know what they want. They want to, they want to get in and get out quickly, and then they're, they're on and happy. There's also, you know, a couple of other uh, categories that we pay attention to. One is, you know, the, the person that enjoys the community of actually being in the dispensary. And it's, it's, it's a person that actually might come in, engage in some conversation. They know what they want. They're, they're still a regular consumer. They're still a part of our loyalty program. They're still very involved in, um, as cannabis as part of their life. And, you know, that's another, that's another segment that we want to pay attention to when we're talking about the experience. And then the third one is the, is the newer, the new person to cannabis. Um, and that is someone that, that really wants to learn, and they've, they've never used a kiosk before. And they could be one of those, they, they could very soon be one of those customers that are at the top of the rack, um, you know, representing 80% of your sales, but they need some education and some time and some hand-holding. So that takes a bit of a different type of experience when those customers first come in the store. Yeah, I would just add one other way to think about things is your e-com customer. So in, in our business now, we're about 40% e-com. 60% in store. So when I say e-com, I mean order ahead on our website. What we found, and this is true of all retail, and John can speak to this more than I can, but your e-com customer may have very different habits and things that they're looking for than your in-store customer. And I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of cannabis retailers trying to create differentiated offerings for their e-com customer versus their in-store. I mean, if you look at traditional retail, if you go to the the Gap physical store, they may have different stuff than the Gap online store, right? And so how do we start to think about that? You know, John Lowen can speak to how those, that web generated traffic is sort of behaving and what their, what their kind of critical points are. But, but I think that's another, we're gonna see more e-com usage and how do we cater our business also to those customers? Cause I think historically we've been really focused on the in-store experience, but that, that's shifting away into other directions now. Go ahead, John. How do you bridge the gap between online and the in-person retail experience? Yeah, so I won't get into the technical aspect of it, but um, to your point, like when you're, when you're shopping online, you're going to see all the intent. And so you're going to see what products people are viewing, what items they're adding to the cart, what are they taking out of their cart. So you get a multiple of information versus what you're going to get from your point of sale. And so the point of sale, you're just seeing the actual sale and the conversion event, and you're seeing what they check out with. But online, you get to see everything else that they were looking at. Um, taking it like a step further, when you look at, I kind of correlate it to now, what do we want to stock in store? What are the products that are selling well? What are the, de well, when you tie it back to like the demographic, the original question you're talking about, what demographic, what products are resound, like uh, working with different demographics? And so that helps with like product development and your, the inventory you want to uh, stock in store as well. But like from a technology perspective, being able to connect those two for one of the things we always talk about a lot with our retailers is as soon as you are checking someone out, you should say, hey, What's your email? Because uh, I'll email you your receipt. You know, when I go to any retailer store, I'm without question always providing my email, whether they're emailing me the receipt or they want to track if I'm an existing customer. Um, I think that's a big, a big area in the customer experience perspective that is really lacking in the dispensary space because we see it firsthand. We just don't have enough customer data being captured at the point of sale, whether it's a phone number, or whether it's a, uh, an email, because our ability now to understand if this person comes back a week later, what are they purchasing, creating that history, that lifetime value, being able to bridge the gap between the online and the offline activity, um, those type of, like an email and a phone number is a, two specific identifiers that help with that, uh, with that technology gap. Uh, so that's a key component. If there's one takeaway, make sure all of your butt tenders are getting an email or a phone number. Um, 
and then there's a lot of other stuff that we could talk about around like what I think should be happening in like digital merchandising and how we should be presenting stronger product pages and more akin to like what you see in a Walmart or an Amazon as far as like the ability to talk about the differentiation of these products so c customers have like a better idea of what they're buying and more education as well because I think that will help those customers who don't know what they're doing and are in the 20% right now. Yeah, I would just add, I think that a lot of customers are dealing with information overload, uh, particularly in the really competitive open markets. They're getting bombarded with advertisements. If you walk into a store, they're being handed a deal sheet Sorry. that might have 100 deals. What's that? That's hard. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's this guy's fault. But, um, but no, if they walk into a store, they're being handed a deal sheet or on a TV screen that has 100 deals on it, that's impossible for them to quickly process. Uh, so I think how you communicate and trying to clutter, declutter that information, provide the education to John's point, to the newer customers, that's how you cut through the noise. And, and people are looking for guidance, I think. That's what we see. Even, even experienced consumers are still dealing with a lot of noise and trying to figure out what's the best product, what's the best pricing, where am I going to get the best deal? And so communicating that effectively is critical. Yeah, I think like, look, this is again, technology is at the heartbeat of all this, right? If you want to sync your e-com with your store information, the same consumer data, you want to make sure you're capturing emails on checkout, uh, to John's point, right? You've got to have the right tech stack. Not everyone does this stuff in our space. So if you, you got to really double check you have the right tech in your store today. I mean, seriously, go take a look at what you have today and make sure you have the right technology because it, it, it deeply matters to the entire experience from online to in-store, having all of that sync together and then having the right tools to market back to those customers. And so yeah, anyway, t tech is just so important to all of this. Definitely. I also want to go into the topic of experience and uh, the can of curious. Um, so John, you touched on a really good point there, having an experience like, People that want to go and say, for example, Whole Foods, sometimes I'll go in there just to walk around because they have such beautiful products and you just want to feel what's there. And then other times you want to say, whatever, go into a Target and it's, it's really about uh, you know, efficiency, saving time, you want in and out. How do you um, get the experience across? Yeah, I think that um, as, as number of us have mentioned the experience is different based on what the customer wants and I think understanding what the customer's wants are first and foremost is the start of how you create a great experience for them and so you know if even if the customer and many of ours have placed an order in advance of coming to the store how they're greeted and how they're determined and recognized as a customer is probably the first human uh, you know contact that they have and it's a very critical one and then if it's a customer that's in need of, you know, rapid in and out, you want to expedite their, their check-in. Ours is, by the way, you know, in 30 seconds or less. Um, and I think some of our techno current technology partners are probably squirming a little bit at your advice. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that building on that, I think the other part of experience is, is getting customer feedback. And it's, you know, something that we've really spent a lot of time on over the last year is, is developing and building a better pipeline of feedback from our customers. And there's probably five or six that I'll just quickly tick off. Register receipt survey, um, kiosk-based survey, email-based survey, surveys to our loyalty customers, bud tender feedback on what the customers are seeing and liking. And then probably, you know, something we all do is read Reddit and all the pages that talk about the products and the service they're getting from our dispensary. So I think, being informed on the front end about what customers are, what they desire, what they're thinking, what their feedback is, helps create you know, better experiences for us at retail. How many customers are using the barcode on a receipt or to, to leave a Google review or to give you feedback? I'm curious like how many customers are actually No, we, we, have, we, have had, we have had tremendous feedback. Now, the, the latest one that we've added um, is actually a key, right on the kiosk at the completion of your order. We, we've popped up a quick three question survey that asked for, you know, how did your transaction go? What feedback do you have for us? So we're, we, we have had thousands over the last year, we've had thousands of respondents, responses to our, to the variety of different uh, feedback loops we put in place. Yeah, I, I would just add back to what I was saying earlier, you're really running kind of two different businesses. One is your e-com business that you're, you know, nor, in a normal retail environment, if people order e-com, they get it delivered to their home, right? But the difference here is they order online, then they have to come to the store to pick it up. Um, so you're kind of running that e-com sort of business and fulfilling that customer, which I think the lion's share of those customers want to get in and out quickly. They want to have 
sort of you know ease of transacting. They don't want to wait for 20 minutes if they ordered ahead. And then you have a, a different subset that's coming into the store that may be looking for something much more experiential. So I think recognizing that there's two very different processes that you're running there is critical. And, and then have, making sure that your team and your store is set up to recognize, hey, there are two different types of customers here, two different customer journeys. And again, if a person's looking for the quick in and out, make sure they get that. If someone's looking for more of the experience, you know, make sure you're giving that to them. But recognize, again, there's two very different tracks of how people are coming in and, and what they're coming in for. John at Surfside, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. Um, they, uh, when we, we've run something very similar where we had clients like outside of the cannabis vertical, um, we used to work with Nordstrom's, and they were interested if it was, is there people going to Prada, Nordstrom's, Old Navy, or is it Nordstrom's, Old Navy Gap? And so they wanted to know kind of like where not only you have your two purchase paths there, but like are people going to the gas station and then the grocery store and then the dispensary and then going home? Like where does it fit in that user's journey or is it they go to the liquor store and then the dispensary? Like how does it fit within that person's demographics and that person's kind of buying profile as well? Like where is it? Are they buying luxury products? Are they buying, um, are they sp spending big basket sizes? This is like a, a weekend purchase or an everyday purchase and so those those are other elements, because I think you were talking about the different typographics of like, the, like do people want to be in and out, or do they want to spend time? Do they want to come in, look around, and enjoy themselves? Like, and so there are so many different ways of going through that. Uh, there's also tons of different attributes that you can use to better understand where they are in that journey and who they are as customers outside of just demographics, and that help, help you better define who they are from an experience perspective, other purchases they're making outside of cannabis, like other CPG, other entertainment, you know, what they like to do for fun. And this, this will help you create a, a better picture of like the whole view of who these customers are so that you as a business can kind of see where you fit within the entire buying journey rather than just the dispensary journey. Great. Um, so how about like just general challenges in providing experience? to the customer. Yeah, I, I think, you know, speaking about e-commerce and in-store, like one of the big things that, that we've seen over the years is that because you do have a lot of these software platforms, they're all kind of trying to integrate with each other. You know, for people that own, uh, you know, an e-commerce platform, they've acquired it. So it's really two separate systems still. It's really hard to smash platforms together behind the scenes. So there's things in the experience like, as a consumer, you order online and the price is $3 off from what you're gonna go pay in the store. And this happens really frequently in our space. These little kind of, kind of edge cases that uh, you don't really see in other industries. And so I, I think it's just you know being aware of the partners you're working with and how they all interact. And you know that, that you, you should go take your own consumer journey. Go do an undercover boss in your store. Go go be the consumer and check the whole thing and be really maniacal about it. Uh, and that's really the, the that whole process from walking in in store to ordering online and getting to the express lane are the orders being fulfilled quickly is it a good experience like you'll know right you should go do it yourself go be a really hands-on uh, leader at your organization and go check it out yourself you'll see it f firsthand actually we're running out of time so let's do a quick outro um, just to kind of sum everything up uh, Kyle do you want to go with a quick outro and then we'll run down the line and yeah. Sure. Well, okay. it was great being here today, but uh, any questions we've got, Flow Hub has a booth or whatever, like a meeting room over here. I'm happy to chat with folks. I'm super passionate about cannabis retail. Uh, but uh, look, I'm excited to meet a lot of you and talk about uh, your store, your operations. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for being here today and, and taking a listen to our, our little chat up here. And John? It's, it's all about the customer. I think that's, that's everything I have to say. It's all about the customer. Yeah, I would second that, and I would also just say that retail to me is about running the whole playbook effectively. There's no magic bullet in retail. You've got to get all the pieces dialed in to really make it work. I'll uh, finish on data capture, understand your customers, make sure that you're grabbing data from your website, from your e-com, from your point of sale. You're getting as much information. You're unifying that to have a whole a single view of who that customer is and then uh, have the tools to then activate it for your marketing outreach or just your communication, which is how you put that to use uh, from a sales perspective. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks to Benzinga. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. All right, everyone.